In this video, we will show you how you can get from an outline of a bottle to a 3D model in minutes using ESCO Studio Tools combined with Keyshot to produce visuals like the ones you see right here. ESCO Studio offers visualizer quality as well as ray trace quality, but if you need that next level of 3D rendering, we will add Keyshot to our workflow. Here, we're starting in Adobe Illustrator by creating an outline, a profile, if you will, of a bottle. Using the Studio Toolkit for labels, we revolve this profile around the Z-axis and identify those three different parts. At this point, you can also add a label which will define this as a printable part. This can be done interactively as well as numerically. Once done, save this model and place it in a new Illustrator document. Head on over to the Studio window, the Designer window, to show the printable area and add your artwork. At this point, you can render this using ESCO's visualizer or ray trace capabilities. But as mentioned before, if you need that extra level of realism, we are going to add a non-ESCO product to our workflow called Keyshot. Notice that the materials are defined in generating this Keyshot repository, I can do by using the export to Keyshot. Set the resolution high enough, and once saved, go ahead and open this Keyshot file with the extension BIP in the Keyshot software. Pick your image resolution. In the top left, you can pick your workspace. You can navigate using the tumble, pan, and dolly feature. Notice that Keyshot will always be rendering in real time. You can go ahead and pause this if you want, but uh, you would activate it in order to immediately see feedback. In the left-hand side, the material library, we find materials, colors, environment, and other operations we can apply. In the right-hand side, the scene, we can see the different model surfaces that were designed in our Illustrator Studio Toolkit for labels. And we now have the opportunity to assign materials to these parts. You can edit these materials by double clicking and going to the properties. And you can pick new materials by heading on over to the material library and searching for the material you want to assign. In this case, we're going to apply a blue heart textured plastic. We can simply drag and drop this onto the part in the scene we want. And then double clicking on this material, we can edit the properties. In this case, we can change the diffuse color, specular, roughness, the refractive index and other properties. Notice I've already assigned liquid water with bubbles to the content. Here I searched for the word liquid in the material library. And after identifying, I can apply it to the scene surface in question. If you want to make changes, to the properties, you can do so.
for example, here, we are lowering the transparency distance and the refractive index. We can set a color out for render. And we can even get a more detailed view using the material graph. So this shows you the final material, liquid water with bubbles, and how this material is made up. You can see on the left hand side we have the liquid and on the top we have the density texture, the bubbles. So this allows you to fine tune the final operation. It's always uh, handy if you have two screens here, then you can position this material graph on your other screen and see the effects of those changes immediately on your screen. Once you are happy with the way this looks, you can close this interface. The environment also plays a big role on the look and feel. You can see the startup HDR environment is by default defined, but heading on over to the library environment, you can also drag and drop additional types of environment on the scene. You can edit these light points. Here we're looking at a three point light in a 4K environment. Each of these points can be adjusted can be transformed. By using the sliders, you can position these lights. Activate whether or not you want to define shadows. And you can even go into the HDRI editor to add, remove or manipulate each of these light sources. Let's go back to a balanced startup 4K. In the scene, uh, I always like to add a geometry for the ground plane. This gives me more control over that ground plane. That ground plane uh, will behave just like any other material. So you can double click on that and then you can set the properties for that ground plane. Notice you can also apply textures like specular bumps, opacity and shadows. <clears throat> Last but not least, uh, lighting is very important. So the lighting presets can be picked here. A product typically works best for consumer product goods. Um, jewelry will give you more uh, highlights. Um, custom, obviously, you can add your own lighting environments. And then how the light interacts with the environment. So ground illumination, uh, shadows, uh, caustics. Uh, and yeah, feel free to experiment with these options. Another great option in Keyshot is the fact that you can duplicate objects. So if we go into the uh, scene library and right click on our object, we can go ahead and duplicate this. Notice we also have an animation here at the bottom. Let's ignore that for now. Um, as you are Moving this duplicate, you can activate the translate, rotate, and or scale, allowing you to move that duplicate object and rotate it wherever uh, you want to obtain the look and feel that you desire. This can be done interactively or numerically. Here I've already applied an animation with a 360 degree rotation. Let's go ahead and close that. And let's also set now some camera operations. So 
This allows you to create a depth of field effect. At the bottom of this interface, use the little crosshair. Click on the object that you want to focus on to set your focal point. Don't forget to click on the Done button in order to lock that focus distance in. And then you can set your f-stop to create the level of depth of field required. Once we are happy with the way this looks, we can head on over to the render at to Q to render this image out. Notice on the top of the screen, we have still image animation, Keyshot XR and configurator. Make sure we are working in the still image tab. Indicate your output folder. In this case, I forgot to switch that over from animation to still. The resolution here is very important. That's your work area. Your uh, format, output format and quality, obviously. Uh, which layers and passes do you want to render out? And you can also decide to render out a specific region. So if you don't want to render the entire scene, you can render just a part of that scene. The render mode and quality. Again, quality very important to determine your final quality of your image, which will impact your render time. So here you can set the number of samples, ray bounce, anti-aliasing quality, shadow quality, global illumination quality, your pixel filter size, which I typically leave on one to not apply pixel blur to get a very crisp output. You could leave this on 1.5 and then later bring that image into Photoshop and apply some additional filters that could also be a part of your workflow. And once you're happy, you hit the render button. And at this point, depending on the speed of your computer, you will obtain the following image. Hope you like this tutorial and thanks for your time.